Here we are with our wonderful world traveler, Ben Soffer. Tell us about your wonderful Portuguese trip. I mean, this was a trip. Like, you, I'm sure that you've been on many trips. I'm sure you've been on many trips. This was a trip where no expense was paid. Brian Kelly, dear friend of the podcast, dear, dear personal friend of the family, through his 40th birthday in Lisbon. And I got to tell you, this was like no other birthday party you've ever been to. Ugh, tell Just me. Like, like he kept saying a wedding to himself because he's not married, has a beautiful son. He's ready to get on with his life. He doesn't need a guy. He needs himself through himself a wedding weekend. It was absolutely a wedding. Thursday night, welcome dinner. Friday night, just an like unbelievable concert at a beachfront castle. He got Kim Petrus, who just won a Grammy, to come and like sing straight in my face. He also gave me the best seat in the whole house. I you like you've never seen a better seat. There were probably 150 people at this dinner and or, or at this dinner turned concert and I was smack dab in the middle right in front of her it felt personal to me he got the star of Titanic I don't know if you've heard of Titanic uh, but it is uh, uh, Celine Dion uh, I guess drag like, show it's not really drag or maybe it is she wasn't drag the person that uh, I saw but maybe the rest of it is drag uh, but if it like isn't it should be no, I, 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 feel like, I feel like it is a drag show, but at least the person who came was not in drag. And she just did an unbelievable Celine Dion impression. Ugh. And he did bring in drag queens. She, I think her name was Chandra. She was fantastic. And uh, then Saturday night, we had the roast of Brian Kelly. Claudia led a roast. Friends came up, delivered some wonderful one-liners. I got back on the plane, and here I am with you. Just... <sighs> A little bit more worldly. I think the moral of this story is there's nothing like a rich friend. I mean, when you have rich friends break the social contract in such a great way, because if I was having a birthday party, I feel bad if it's on, like if I picked a cheesecake factory on the wrong side of town, I feel bad asking people to schlep 30 minutes on the 405 freeway. This guy's like, come to another country, cross an ocean to come celebrate me. Trust me, it's gonna be worth your while. That was literally one of Claudia's jokes. She's like, thank you so much, Brian, for having all of us pay 10 grand to celebrate you. Uh, but it really was so, so unbelievable. And you can really only do it, like he knew. He knew that if he asked people to travel across the world, that he needed to shell out. And my God, it was, it really was absolutely spectacular, but I'm with you. If, this, if, if you're, if you're not willing to pony up, you can't do it. It's the same way I feel about a destination wedding. If you're going to invite me to a destination, you got to make this destination worth my while. Otherwise I would have rather just given you the three grand as a present or let's split it. I was give, giving you nowhere near the three grand that I spent. So you take 1500, I'll take 1500. We both stay at home. You're richer than me. You didn't have to spend any money on the wedding. Right? Do you feel that way about destination weddings too? I no, I, I I share your feelings, and it's also fascinating to me about how like old school people like our parents, a destination wedding is such a violation. It's so <laughs> unacceptable. I remember my wife and I because she has a gigantic Irish Catholic family, and I had uh, you know some people I wanted to come to the wedding as well. And it just you know you start looking at like if we have two hundred people. This is going to cost us as much as like a small home in Wichita. So we start to romanticize the idea of maybe having a destination wedding in Cabo, which for L.A. is like a two hour trek to Mexico. And it's a stunning place. Let me tell you, when I told my mother we were thinking about that, she goes, sounds wonderful. I won't be attending. <laughs> 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 and I was like, Mom, what are you talking about? She's like, my friends and family are going to be traveling from New Jersey and they will not connect. You cannot ask people to connect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. We need to have your mom on the pod. She's as good as gold. She's better than ever. And she's recently had um, cataract laser eye surgery, which makes me happy to know that when I go downstairs to look at her car, that I'm not going to see random like uh, yellow paint or uh, dents <laughs> from from parking columns. She, is she a good driver? 
yes, she's an overly good driver, which means she drives mm. 35 in a 55. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like my dad. My dad, like, used to drive me everywhere and when me and claudia started dating he actually would drive her everywhere too nice. but it came to it came to a point where he, claudia just looked at him and he's like and she's like if you keep driving me to class i'm they're going to kick me out of the class because i always show up 30 minutes late because bruce offer drives also 30 and a 60 uh on the fdr and we've we've since forced him into retirement not because he can't drive but because he's a horrendous driver tell me if this is scummy i remember my buddy dated a girl in high school whose dad they were very they were they were very well off and so at night he lived downtown on the lower east side the father would give him 20 bucks to take a cab home and he his his girlfriend's father and he would pocket the 20 and take the subway is this smart or is this whack whack <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Well, that's I mean, insane. He's like that's a sixteen-year-old <laughs> gutter rat New York kid, like I was. Like you know what I mean? That is <laughs> whack. That is just. <laughs> that is just. That is just no bueno. Like, can you imagine the secondhand embarrassment of him finding that out? Like, he, by the way, does he know, or is he going to hear it on the podcast? I don't know. We don't talk anymore, so fuck it. Yeah, but like that is, I can't even imagine. No, no, that is certainly, look, you got to appreciate the savvy hustler. Like Gary V would love that story. Like that is just like an A plus story for Gary. Take but that $20 for, and buy trading cards. Sell them on eBay. <laughs> like what would Gary V say? Which by the way, for the listeners, you worked for Gary V. Uh, Gary is a wonderful wonderful mentor friend when i see him we don't see each other that often but love gary but that was a wonderful impression of gary and yes <laughs> gary would tell you that the 20 dollars that you did just make you could make effortlessly into far more by shopping at garage sales or buying his wine or buying spirit society that's really what he should have done he should have went taken the 20 bought a couple cans of spritz flipped them on the black market <laughs> what do you think Back to Brian Kelly's uh, extravagant birthday for one moment, knowing that he had incredible performers like Kim Petras, who I've known for, for over a decade, and knowing that, that it was so extravagant, I know this is rude, but hear me out. What's the over-under? What, what are we estimating this, this extravaganza cost? It's really not that rude. I think he'd just be upset if I underestimated. It's a million plus. I feel like <sighs> Kim Petra's got to be quarter mil. Let's say it was a million dollars. Nice. Let's say that. I really don't know. But yeah, Kim Petra's, I mean, she was definitely the most expensive uh, part of the weekend. She was also, I just can't stress enough how unbelievable, like such a great voice. And to hear that voice in that environment, ooh, so good, so good. So good. There's nothing like having, yeah, it's just insane how rich people live. I remember, <clears throat> sorry, I remember I went to a um, charity event and Annie Lennox of the Eurythmics, you know, sweet dreams are made of these. She was performing for, for all of us, extremely insanely talented. And I was maybe five feet from her and there was maybe 40 people in the room. But what I couldn't get over was that Whitney Cummings was there watching and she took her shoes off in the middle. It's the little things I notice, you know? That's so strange. Socks or no socks? No socks. And it was curled up on this person's couch. I said, Whitney, what are you doing? That's very strange. I would tell That's that to her face. Yeah, you, you did. You <laughs> did. I'm just saying this podcast is really, it's really blown up. I'm sure it'll land... Right on Whitney's desk, printed out, things that she needs to read, curled toes at a Eurythmics private concert. You know that I know, like, I knew Kim Petras when she was, when she no. had just moved to America, right? No, I didn't. And you subtly dropped that you've known Kim Petras for a decade, and I was thinking to myself, I, I, like, how is that possible? But please do tell. So, Drake of Drake and Josh... 
perhaps you've heard of it. He created the theme song to Drake and Josh. He worked with two guys named Backhouse Michael Corcoran and Super Chris Abraham. You know, these music people, they have fancy. <laughs> they think they're like in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Those names are insane. They're not NBA names. They're like XFL or like WWE. <laughs> They're wrestler names. Yeah, right? <laughs> so Drake used to work with this guy, Ray Mysterio and Ric Flair. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, bring out the chair (laughs) (laughs) and they're super you know they're incredibly talented producers and my good friend super chris abraham would basically he would find these the there would be these people who were like you know young really talented folk who would want to have a producer sort of shepherd them into hollywood and help them to kind of break through And he had had a couple throughout the years and they were like nice people. Sometimes they were, you know, more EDM country artists. They sort of ran the gamut. But for the most part, I would listen to these people. I'd be like, they're very nice. They're probably the most talented people in their town. I just can't see them like making it to the radio. But as a producer, if you're not like on that crazy high level, you've got to work with a bunch of people and hope that somebody sticks. So one day I show up to Super Chris's house and uh, <laughs> and there's this girl named Kim Petrus there. And she couldn't have been older than like 19 or 20. And he's like, you know, she's from Germany and she's really good. Like she might be the one. And I was like, well, play, play her stuff. And he played me three songs and it was like Plastic Factory, and like two other songs. And I was like oh, she might be the one. And then I called my wife over, who she was my girlfriend at the time, and she came over. She's like, oh, you finally found one, Super Chris. So he was kind of like the guy that brought her into Hollywood. And then, of course, a bunch of other massively famous, gigantic producers came and basically stole her away from him. But nevertheless, (laughs) he, you know, helped shepherd her. And so we hung out a handful of times. And I was like, you're pretty undeniable. It, It like felt like I was hanging out with someone on borrowed time, like, oh, I can't believe I get to spend time with you right before you're extremely famous and probably wouldn't talk to me anymore. Yeah, she was she was truly unbelievable. And shout out to her assistant that was a toaster and couldn't have been nicer and created that nice bridge between Claudia and Kim to just uh, have a nice embrace after the show. So it was she was amazing. And you basically discovered her. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> By the way, it, just in case Kim does happen to listen to this, if you would like to come on the show, you're absolutely more than welcome. Kim's the uh, best. And- I had her on my first podcast, and I almost regret it because I would have liked to save the favor for this one. It's much more successful. Yeah, we can. I'll put in the favor on my side, <laughs> and when she knows that we have a podcast together, I think it'll just be, it'll just be that much sweeter. But that was probably the highlight of Portugal. Uh, the food in Lisbon was such dog shit. I can't no. even tell you. Yeah, but like it's so rude of me to say that because the only meals, again, we woke up every day at three. We went to bed every day at four. I saw none of Lisbon, none of it, like none of it. And the only the only thing that we ate was the food at the catered events, which was lovely, of course, uh, and then uh, McDonald's. Like the amount of McDonald's that we ordered in Every single night, all the weight I lost, I gained back on McPlants at 3.30 in the morning in Lisbon. What's a McPlant? A McPlant is what a kosher boy eats at a McDonald's when he's trying not to eat the burgers in Lisbon. It's filet of fish? No, it's worse than that. It's like... A plant burger? Yeah, it's like the beyond meat, but it's like beyond beyond meat, like... I wish, like, Beyond Meat tastes, like, a little bit like meat. This tasted like what a McPlant sounds like. Like a fake patty, rubbery, but honestly, anything with that sweet and sour sauce. Anything. I can't wait to see one day, God willing, when you're 120 and you go to meet Hashem God, when he goes, Ben, the amount of juking and jiving you did to tell yourself that you were kosher. <laughs> I really it's respect. So true. I'm trying to find myself. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Once, like a long time ago, I heard a rabbi say this. And honestly, it was probably the worst thing the rabbi ever said because he gave me the justification for feeling the way that I do. As long as you're trying to go closer to God, 
you're on the right track. But honestly, that gave me the leniency to kind of come, all right, so I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. No, Ben, have some fucking self-control and eat the McPlants. So the McPlants was what I ate. The food in Lisbon, I just got to say then, was terrible based on my experience. My experience was McPlants, but... How, uh, how are you and Claudia traveling together? Because my wife and I, I would say we're not the best at vacationing together. Horrible. I want to hear you first. Well, but we, we are... Or, okay. We've talked you, about this. Yeah. You and I, oh, oh, we, yes. we have spilkish. We like to walk around. We want to do things. Our wives want to camp out with a book until 8 o'clock at night and then basically nap and then wake up the next day and do the same thing. But I, yeah, I just find the whole enterprise very nervous making, a lot of uh, undue stress. And I, yeah, my wife and I don't travel great together. We... We travel great once we're at our destination. Mm. But when I tell you, being in an airport with my unbelievable wife, A+, plus, like hit the lottery, that said, being in an airport with Claudia is possibly the worst experience on the planet. Why? When I t because I am the mule. She cannot carry one single thing. Not one thing. Not a backpack. Not a bag. And we had... we. The rule for this trip was no checked luggage, not a drop. By the way, good rule, good rule. I, I totally agree, but that comes with a long list of rules. The other rule being you cannot pee off the plane. So uh, there have been plenty of rides where I've thought I was just going to pee my pants in the Uber. But th that said, I, I digress. No checked luggage for the trip, which I agree with you. In practice, makes a whole lot of sense that you don't have to wait for your bags, especially in a foreign country. That said, we went for a long weekend. We each had two enormous carry-ons, two rollers. I had like a hanging bag. She had a, her pocketbook. She had uh, another bag. Just me, muley. Two bags on rollers, two bags on top of the rollers, pushing them through. Get to the gate. She always needs to be so early. So early, I'm the polar opposite. I, I'd rather risk missing the flight because I don't want to spend more than one minute extra in an airport. I agree. Not Claude. Not Claude. We showed up. We were, I, I think we had like two, at least two hours in the Lisbon airport before we boarded. Oof. At least two. But to give her credit, she also uh, is fantastic with everything logistics. Yes. Like this, this flight, I didn't even know it was booked. It was amazing. She just, like, she booked it. She also booked the car. That stuff, amazing. In the actual airport, getting from point A to point B, the stuff of nightmares. When do we, and I say this as the highest compliment, when do we tell Claudia, it's we don't have to keep up appearances anymore. Let's get you a scooter. <laughs> like, she, she, she would kill for the scooter. She would, yeah, right? Have you seen the... Uh, did you did you ever see her Billy on the Street episode, or do you know that she did Billy on the Street? I what it was random, right? Where she's wearing the funny hat. Yeah, just random. Like she was just an NYU student. Amazing. And he just happened to to get her. But that was during Claudia's skateboarding phase, Ugh. and many and many people don't know that she loved her board. And I think that I mean the, she should just get back on the board. She would skateboard like kick and push skateboard. Kick and push skateboard. Stop it. She loved it. I, this is a whole new side of Claudia and I'm here for it. Yeah, she loved it. We got to get her back on the board. The board is like, she's made for the board. But Maybe. yeah, Scooter, Scooter would be good too. We always joke that the second she gets pregnant, I'm buying her a wheelchair. Like she could be one week pregnant, wheelchair. And we're just, but I think an electric scooter is better. Does your mom, does your mom use a scooter? No, but she, you know what? I, she doesn't need it, but I keep trying to push her towards it because I want her to do it for me. Cause I'm like, we're going to get the front of the line at Disneyland. Like I'm going to juice that scooter nonstop. We can go places like Costco. We can throw, she can do the Costco scooter with the gigantic basket in front. I just think there's a lot, a big upside to it, but people are too wrapped up in optics. They're too wrapped up in optics. I agree. My dad should probably use the scooter. He should. But no, too, too wrapped up in optics. It's the same thing. Ugh. I, 
I wish. I wish. Um, I think there's, you know, uh, we we are on the heels a week later. Fair enough. But the Oscars were last night. Did you happen to take in any of it? Have you watched anything? Do you know anything? I watched the second half of the Oscars. I watched enough to see two things. The first is that that one movie won everything. What was it called? Everywhere, uh, all the time, nonstop, yeah. go as hard as you can, metaverse. Yeah. Jamie we, we, Lee yeah. Curtis. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Something like that. It's That's great. what it was called. The people they kept love it. winning. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure people love it. They kept winning. They win. They win. They win. I made the comment to Claudia. If you're going to win best picture, you're probably like, shouldn't they divide these awards up a little bit? Like, I get that the best actor probably has the best picture because to have the best picture, you really need the best actor. Mm. And if you have the best picture, you probably have the best soundtrack. And if you have the best soundtrack, you probably have the best director. So, right? Like, I don't know. I would have loved to have seen, not that I saw The Whale, but Brendan Fraser gave a speech that made me think that The Whale should have won some more stuff because he is just such a, so passionate and... uh yeah, just uh, like climbed from the bottom back up to the top. So I would have liked him to see a little bit more. I'm trying to think what else I took away from it. Did you see the, uh, uh, what was the what was the name of it? It was two Indian guys that accepted the award, and he sang as he accepted his award. Oof. The, carp- the carpenter. Did, did you see it? No, it was amazing. It was amazing? Oh, my God. I, I melted see inside. It. Oh, I melted. I'll send you the video later. I melted. Like this. It Gorgeous. was so... It was so good. It was so good. He was the cutest man I've ever seen in my life. What is the... Because I think award shows in general, there's two major mistakes you can make. If you're presenting, it's a major mistake if you try to make it about you, right? Mm. And Mm -hmm. you see everyone do it, and you know the moment they go off prompter, and if you're not like a 1% hilarious... If you're not Steve Martin, don't do it. Just say the words. It's not about you. Or if you're accepting an award, don't make it one. Like if I have to see someone go for 45 seconds about this gigantic thing they've had planned about making this big statement. And then as the music comes on, they go, I also want to thank Universal Pictures. But I completely agree. There's nothing worse than when somebody comes on and starts to talk about something that has nothing to do with the movie and that nobody gives a shit about. Like come up. Thank your parents. Thank your kids. Yes. Thank the people that helped you. Definitely thank the studio that gave you the money. Yes. And sure, thank the, if there's a natural tie-in because you made such a powerful piece that it provoked thought, I'm all aboard if you want to talk about that. But when people start bringing in personal agendas, it just, it's going to be a no for me, dog. It's going to be a no for me. I Did you see the Hugh Grant interview <laughs> on the red carpet? No, tell me. This has gotten a lot of press. Marshall, did you see it? Mm-hmm. Hugh Grant was pretty rude. <laughs> to this, <laughs> 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 which I know, coming from Hugh Grant, none of us want to believe it, but he was pretty rude. This woman was like, lovely, and interviewing him. She's like, you're so good in this movie, blah, blah, blah. She's like, fawning. He goes... Well, I'm only in the movie for two minutes, so I don't know why we're talking about it. (laughs) (laughs) The woman says, are you excited to see anyone here tonight? And he goes, not really. (laughs) And then she says, well, what are you wearing? He goes, a suit. Oh, my God. (laughs) She says, who's it by? And he goes, my tailor. (laughs) (laughs) Like, this is a a super level of jerkdom. Am I right? Oh, my God. Are you right? That's crazy. Hugh, That's crazy. I mean, can Hugh believe it? (laughs) Can Hugh believe it? I know. That's crazy. I'm like taken aback. Do you think he had beef with the reporter? I don't know. I just think he's had too much, too much good stuff. His life is too rosy. It's just like, have you seen that? Uh, those clips of Jim Carrey when he's interviewed in yes. similar situations and he just starts talking. He talks to the reporter about how none of this matters and Ugh. no one's really here. 
and we're all just it's like energy in a room dog we're, we're not- at sonic the hedgehog too all right bro <laughs> like why do you save it nietzsche save it and go on rogan like there's a there's a there's a great like there's a great place to talk about this stuff and i want to hear about it i want to hear about how me and you really aren't doing a podcast how we're just energies yeah like, connecting but if you show up to an award show you need to show up knowing that you're going to be asked questions as incredibly famous actors and you need to like you play you already started to play the game the second that you went like acknowledge that you're playing the game and if you really hate it that much then you can't enjoy the benefits of it either and you should not be making movies right like do you feel differently yeah i mean i would literally be like hey siddhartha what's it like acting with a blue hedgehog like yeah. <laughs> stop it like then don't take the money then don't i just think it's all a bit it's the wrong place to make a statement like that probably totally what what do you think of kimmel um from what i saw i thought he was good again like i didn't want it to become this gigantic sort of um Oh, and we can talk about this, like tongue in cheek joke about the Will Smith slap. Like I wanted it to sort of move past that. And from what I can tell, he had some good ish jokes. I mean, I think the whole enterprise is sort of unforgiving, but I thought he did the best he could. What'd you think? He had a couple of good one liners. I'm trying to remember the one that I liked the most. There was something about uh, dad's texting, which I really, really resonated with me. Uh, Just like the, the way the, if I'm trying to remember the exact joke, it was something about uh, like dads need an editor. Oh, it was all about editing. And yeah. it's like, if all, if all of our dad's texts got edited, they'd be so much better. Cause yeah, my dad texts me just, it's not English. It's not English. Um, but I thought his one liners were good. I thought that he pushed the boundaries a little bit more than I would have expected. I don't know if you saw the part where he was like basically making fun of Malala and she was not like engaging at all. And it's like, I'm also thinking to myself, what is Malala doing at the Oscars? That's a whole nother discussion. Right. Like what, what, what a human rights activist is doing at the Oscars at all. Um, but at the Oscars and trying to remember exactly what he said I wish my brain worked because this podcast would be a lot better if I could remember anything instead of just saying, you know, that was really funny, but I can't remember it. But there were some really funny moments with him uh, doing some crowd work. I just hope we're 90 doing this podcast and we're just (laughs) such old Jews that the whole podcast is, you know, you remember the thing? (laughs) You know, the person with the thing. I looked it up. Basically, he said your work on human rights and education for women and children is an inspiration. As the youngest Nobel Prize winner in history, do you think Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like it was just so weird, and it's like for somebody also who, like, like he's he's pretty he's pretty woke. It, it just like was such like a bizarre time to to choose like like he's picking on her. It, it just it was just it just seemed weird, and she was not into it at all. Her response back to him was like, "If you're not here to talk about human rights, I don't want to talk to you," which. Also, then why are you at the Oscars? Right. So that part I thought was strange. The whole thing was weird. But honestly, I should have expected the whole thing to be weird because they made a movie called Cocaine Bear. And that just gives, lets you know everything you need to know about the state of the movie business. Well, not to be confused with my future movie biography, which will be Percocet Fox. (laughs) 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 The Percocet Panda. (laughs) Well, you know, the other big controversy coming (laughs) coming out of the Oscars was that Lady Gaga's chap lips at Oscars spark (laughs) scorn from fans. In quotes, there's no excuse. She left her head and heart on the dance floor, as well, apparently, her chapstick. Lady Gaga's surprise performance at the Academy Awards. Fans took to Twitter not to praise the singer, but to express concern about her chapped lips. You know, I hope Elon sets Twitter on fire. I need to just Google this quickly, because now I, I got to see what her chapped lips looked like, and i that's the only way I'm going to be able to tell you. I just think... If I agree or disagree with the people. I think she boldly didn't do a big face of, of makeup for her performance, and I thought she looked great. And you know what? If her lips were a little bit dry, 
we're, none of us are perfect. I think her lips look chapped. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got to like the third picture and it was like, it went from like normal, normal, chapped. They're on a little, uh, I don't know, like, like you're going on stage Aquaphor. Carmex like, sponsorship? I, yeah, or by the way, maybe it was intentional. <gasps> She's about to get a fucking bag. She's a genius. Wow. She's a genius. She goes on national television, chapped licks, just so Carmax can give her a freaking bag. Car <laughs> Carmex or Carmax? <laughs> <laughs> just so progressive can... <laughs> That's, that's, funny. that's like when Hillary Duff was on our podcast and she was talking about creamer and the next day she comes out in an Oatly commercial. Yeah, yeah, craziness. She's craziness. brilliant. By the way, and here's some real insider in info and I don't think Hillary would mind. I saw her on Saturday, the day before the Oscars at a kid's birthday party and she was like getting ready for the big Vanity Fair party that she sort of intimated and she's like, I got to fit in this dress. I can't wait to just have like a big dinner on Monday, blah, blah, blah. And so you know that the big thing at these award shows is they card out in and out the second that the awards are over because no one's eaten for like six months. Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. That's amazing. Everyone's gorging, which makes me know that every night of my life is like the night after the Oscars for, for, <laughs> for, for Hollywood. S sounds like my entire trip to Lisbon, except, <laughs> <laughs> except with McPlants. I can't. Um, did, did Hillary mention that our podcast episode like got her like new deals, that she's being appreciated more in the community for her work? The people are really pushing her into new movies. Did she mention our impact? I hope so. I mean, I don't know. I, I, we were with a couple of the How I Met Your Father folk, and they were all like, oh, we listened to the podcast. We loved it. And I was like, I'm glad. Because I was yeah. very care. Like, I just wanted her. She was doing us such a solid, and she's just so great that I was like, I don't want her to walk away from this feeling like I'll never do anything for Josh again. So, fingers crossed she liked it. I, I hope so. You did a great job. I thought you we did, did a ben. great job. It was a really just splendid episode. I don't I don't think we'll ever stop talking about it. I won't I know I won't. I just I, 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 I think I that it was the universe giving us a solid after the Jeanette McCurdy of it all. <laughs> and I still hold out hope for Jeanette and I think it's getting further and further out of our grasp as we talk about it more. <laughs> But you know what? It turned into a running bit. Like if we wanted to release Jeanette McCurdy merch, sure we'd get sued by her, but we'd have a bag first. She's she'd got a she'd have to come after our bag. I don't know when I started using the term bag. Well, you're right because until the cease and desist shows up, that's all pocketed money. All pocketed money. It'll be in our Shopify that night. Speaking of Shopify, today's podcast is brought to you by Shopify. <laughs> That would have been a great, great, wow. Imagine yeah. we were that seamless. Dynamic ad reads. Wow, I love it. It's only like 10 times the price. Just kidding. This episode's brought to you by Topgolf, which has nothing to do with Shopify. Um, <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a Woody Nuts moment of the week? Oh, yes, I do. I do. Uh, I have two. I have two. But I'll, I'll, I'll start with the first one. Okay. We're on the, we're on the plane to Lisbon, and it's a long flight. Seven hours, right? Like that's, that's a long, it's a long way to travel. It's a good one. Sitting in first, Air Portugal, lay flats. It's no JetBlue Mint, but it's very, very lovely. It's no United Pilars. Again, very lovely. Meal comes, cod. Now let me explain what a plane, how do I put this into words to make you smell what I smelled when they served hot cod <laughs> on this plane? Like so hot and so smelly. Have you ever had salmon for dinner and then the next day just like completely blanked and put it in the microwave to heat it up only to have your house reek of fish? Or is this a personal problem? I guess this is a personal problem. Don't microwave your fish. Don't serve cod on, it's not even first class. Don't serve hot cod on the plane. This plane, the entire time, I couldn't breathe from the hot cod. So it's a what are you nuts? Don't serve hot cod on a plane. Just, that's it. If you want cold cod, okay, would it be a little bit gross? Sure. Could we all stand to live on that plane? Yes. 
So that's that's my main what do you nuts. Uh, I'll save my second one for after after. I'll save my second one. Well, I my what do you nuts moment is uh, it's it's a running it's a running issue for me, and I've talked about it before, but I'll I'll talk about it again. The other day. I'm walking and I see this like very age appropriate, you know, someone in my demo, early 20s person recognized me, nice college age kid, lovely, you know, the great minds of tomorrow. And they're with their father, cargo shorts, otter box phone case, you know the type. And I see her clock me and I smile and I kind of keep walking. And then I see the father clock me and and she's whispering to him, and I, I know what's coming next. The father sort of stomps over to me in his new balance, <laughs> and he says, Hey, I have no idea who you are, but my daughter over here, she's going nuts. Do me a favor, take a picture with her. Again, allow me to remind you, I have no idea, nor do I care who you are. <laughs> she, for some reason, likes you. I just wanted to say, sir, just take the picture. Like, do, I don't need the preamble. I don't need to know how much you don't know me. Can't you just say, will you come over and take a picture with my daughter? She would love a picture with you. What are you, nuts? I also feel like we've spoken about this before, but it's never, the, it's, it's the person who asks for it it's never for them. It's very rare. You know how many times I've gotten, oh, you know, my my girlfriend's a big fan. Need a picture for her. But I'm taking it with you. So you can't be that, like, you got to be somewhat of a fan. Right. Something, right? Something. But I'm with you. What are you, nuts? What are you, what are you nuts? nuts? Just are you doesn't, nuts? It just doesn't track. You know, I don't know if you're aware, because we are of the Jewish persuasion in case anyone doesn't have ears who's listening to this podcast um you know saint patrick's day is coming up mm. on the 17th and i i thought we'd be remiss if we didn't learn a couple fun facts about saint patrick's day mm. which is something that the irish have observed for over a thousand years it falls on the christian season of lent irish families would traditionally attend church in the morning and celebrate in the afternoon they would dance, they would drink, and St. Patrick, a person, lived during the 5th century and is the patron saint of Ireland and its national apostle. And he brought Christianity to the Irish. So I think it's also important that we look at 30 facts about alcoholism because it's going to be <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Here's one. The alcohol in alcoholic beverages, such as wine, beer, and spirits, is actually ethanol or ethyl alcohol. It's the only type of alcohol that you can drink without causing serious damage to your body. Thoughts? Well, the most interesting uh, piece of information that I gathered from your uh, what you just said to me uh, was that Christianity was brought to the Irish by St. Patrick. Yeah. I think that's incredibly interesting. And St. Patrick should be far more popular than he is, but I guess he's probably more popular to Irish Catholics than he is just on that specific day of St. Patrick's Day. But when I think of St. Patrick's Day, again, as a, as a Jew, I just think of Jaeger bombs. Like that's... Green beer. That's, Oh yeah, just like Jaeger bombs, pub Jager crawls. Bombs. Do you remember those videos? This is my new fucking haircut. Do you remember those? No. The my new. Oh my god, I have to send you those. But my new my new haircut videos. There's a a line in it. Jaeger bombs, and that's all that I think about. You need to see this. It's fantastic. Just like these guys guys from the South Shore of Long Island. Unbelievable. But yeah, Jaeger bombs. When you. When you were still drinking, were you a were you a fan of the Jaeger bomb on on occasion? What is the Jaeger bomb? Is it uh, just a shot of Jaeger in a beer? Shot of Jaeger in a glass of Red Bull. Oof, that's like a that's nuts. Jaeger bomb. Um, I don't know if I've ever done it. Wow, they're fantastic. Maybe I'll start drinking again. I think you should. I think it's exactly what you need. Come out of retirement for Jaeger bombs. Do you when think you think it's St. Patrick's Day, honestly, with, well, with an entire, you really are Irish Catholic, 
or at least half your side is Irish Catholic. What, yes. What does Paige's family do for St. Patrick's Day? Do you guys celebrate it? You know, we don't do anything special. I don't think. I, I, I mean... Yeah, I, I feel like there's not like a lot of, there's no corned beef and cabbage, there's no Irish soda bread, there's no Colin Farrell movies. We really don't celebrate it the way we should. Any jigs? The Irish jig? No jigs, no pinching, you know, you're you're not wearing green, I'm going to pinch you, which, mm. right, I mean, that's now a, a federal offense. Yeah, no. <laughs> don't pinch me. Don't walk around pinching, folks. Don't pinch me. No, I bruise too easily to be pinched. Don't pinch me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we, we're going to do anything like super Irish. Although, you know, my wife, who is an O'Brien, I, I was recently talking to her parents and who they haven't spent much time in Europe, but they both said that they would like to go back to the motherland of mm -hmm. Ireland and see, you know, the beautiful rolling hills. And so my thought was, let's do a collaboration trip. Ireland first, Israel second to see the two homelands. I love the idea. I love it. Have the O'Briens been to Israel? From Guinness to Gefilte Fish. It'll be a dock. From, <laughs> from Guinness to Gefilte. <laughs> oh, man. Have, have the O'Briens been to Israel or no? No, they haven't. I've never been to Israel. Oh, yeah, we've spoken about this. We need to do that, like, immediately. Like yesterday. Yeah, I, I mean, I just really... I want to see if our celebrity like you know makes it all the way to the motherland it 100 percent does you think so it what i'm positive it 100 percent does and honestly to go full circle on this episode we're going to talk to brian we're going to plan a trip to israel it's the only way to do it honestly the probably the best trip i've been on to israel was with brian because even though i've been i don't know eight or ten times going with somebody who isn't jewish planning out just seeing the whole country i got to see areas that i never would have gone to and it's just such a magical magical country it was amazing so we'll do it with brian again we'll, we'll look out for our live episode of the good guys from the Wayland wall it's probably sacrilege but we're still going to do it live from tel aviv i mean from yerushalayim mm -hmm. that that's our episode thank you all it. we love you're you. gonna love it Follow us, rate, review, do all the things. Do all the things. Find us where you can find your podcasts. Continue to watch us on YouTube because Josh has been uploading all these podcasts on YouTube, which is just so cool. Like to see us live in the bright lights. It's really just something special. So uh, rate, review, subscribe, watch us on YouTube. Continue to give us only positive feedback. I don't want to hear from your negative asses about anything. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Because you used to tell us that we had terrible audio quality. And I got to tell you, even if you didn't say that, we would have improved the audio quality. Because podcasts have growing pains. Yes. And now I feel like we're really just, we're in our moment. But even if you didn't tell us that the audio quality sucked, we would have fixed it anyways. So don't be like the person who says that you're going to take a picture for your Wife, who's a fan, and don't go up to Josh and tell them that you don't care about them, but you want a picture. I only want to hear good things. Is that enough of a monologue? And don't comment on Ben's loud breathing. We're all aware of it, and we love him anyway. It's, it's a pro. Like, what do you, you want me to go under the knife? Like, <laughs> then I'm going to be out of commission for, for months at a time, and you're going to say, Ben, why aren't you recording good guys? Because you made me get surgery. <laughs> all right. Great episode.